Joining us right now, GOP political strategist and co-founder of MustReadTexas.com, Matt McCoviak. Matt, good morning. How are you? Hey, Chad. Good morning. I'm doing great. How about you? Doing fantastic. Thanks for coming on today. Uh, taking a look back on the debate on Saturday night, I think the conventional wisdom is that Marco Rubio did not do too well uh, during that debate, especially early on uh, with some exchanges with Chris Christie. What did you take away from the debate on Saturday? Who did you think underperformed? Who do you think did well in that debate? Yeah, I think the uh, the conventional wisdom uh, surrounding the debate is, is pretty accurate. I thought it was a good night for the governors, particularly a good night for Kasich. He's not my favorite candidate, but, but I thought he uh, did what he needed to do, um, you know, really stayed away from any back and forth with anyone else. He, um, you know, was kind of a softer message, which I think plays well up in New Hampshire, where, you know, 40% of the electorate is independent. Um, look, I think in the final analysis, it was a bad night for Rubio because the only thing people were talking about was the, the two or three minutes that he had with Christie, where he he just seemed to not respond to what Christie was saying, and he kept repeating the same line over and over again, uh, you know, trying to make the point that Obama knows what he's doing, um, which to me, I don't even understand the value of the point. Um, whether he is incompetent or he's knows what he's doing and has achieved a lot for, for liberalism. I'm not sure I even understand what the value of making that point is as a Republican. Right. Um, so, you know, it was just a bit, kind of a bizarre, um, you know, scene to, to watch. Um, you, know, you have Christie challenging you very publicly, um, very sharply. Um, you know, you would think that you would sort of choose to defend yourself and respond. And, he, you know, he did. He brought up, you know, Christie not going – or going back for the snowstorm for 36 hours and then leaving and, um, you know, brought up the credit downgrades and stuff in New Jersey. And so he did, he did sort of shoot back at him, but he didn't defend himself. Right. And it was really striking to see that. And so I, I, t- I tell you, you know, Chad, what I, I think the, the, the net effect of this is, is you are now not going to have the establishment lane unite behind one candidate after New Hampshire. Now, that wasn't guaranteed, but there was a chance that was going to happen. If Rubio finished a strong second in New Hampshire and everyone else was behind him, there was going to be a, a, a massive effort to try to force Jeb and Christie and Kasich to unite behind Rubio to stop Cruz or, and or Trump. That's now not going to happen. Um, number one, I think a lot of people now think Rubio may, not, may be weaker than, 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 than pre- previously thought. But number two, Rubio may not finish a strong second now. This really stopped his momentum in New Hampshire. And now I think there's a, a very real chance Kasich may finish second. I think Jeb Bush has a strong uh, ground game in New Hampshire, and I think could could surprise people. And Christie, to me, I still think he's he's you know built very well for New Hampshire. The numbers haven't shown that, but he spent a lot of time up there. So this remains a very very fluid race. But I think that, that Rubio had a bad night, and he had a bad night at the worst possible moment because he had huge momentum coming out of Iowa, and it was all kind of all, all there for the taking for him, and he just didn't do what he had to do um, at, you know, on the big stage. Well, and it seemed as though Rubio was inching up in the polls. I, I don't know if he necessarily would have caught Donald Trump in New Hampshire, but he was inching closer, and every poll that I've seen since the debate, and, and they haven't all been done since you know Saturday, obviously, but since that poll uh, or since that debate, uh, it, it seems as though the second place is becoming even more cluttered. If, if Marco Rubio doesn't finish in second, and, and as you said, a strong second place, if he finishes in third or fourth place, which I, is a possibility according to some of the polls uh, that I've seen, what does that mean for his campaign? Does that is it over? I don't think it's over. He has you know good resources. Um, he has you know a good organization, South Carolina. Uh, he's got a he's got a you know super PAC that can support him and, and give him money. And he's got a lot of endorsements that are out there. You know, if you go to you go to South Carolina, he's got Trey Gowdy and Tim Scott, I mean, two of the probably most coveted endorsements. But again, what I think is going to happen is you're not going to have this this sort of rapid uh, unity effort behind Rubio. If you if you if you follow this since Iowa. Every day, someone new is endorsing him, some you know, political leader in some state somewhere, some senator or, some, or somebody somewhere is endorsing Rubio. And it's, it's a not very subtle um, effort to, to, to sort of show the parties uniting behind Rubio because they believe he's a strong general election candidate, because they like him a lot, 
Uh, it's a you know response to to you know people that don't like Cruz or afraid of Trump or whatever. That's now not going to happen. And so, I, in a way, I think New Hampshire uh, is going to be a little bit muddled in terms of, of the ultimate result and the impact of the ultimate result. Uh, whereas there was a chance that I thought New Hampshire could have really narrowed the field. I'm now not sure that's the case. I mean, you, you, you know, yes, someone is going to finish fifth, and that person is probably, you know, fifth or sixth, and, and those candidates are going to be under a lot of pressure probably. But if it's all bunched up and then the difference between sixth and third is, is you know, two, two or three percentage points, I'm not sure these candidates are going to get out. Look, Kasich wants to stay until Ohio on March 15th. Jeb wants to stay until Florida on March 15th. Um, you know, Christie, I think now – uh, you know, really feels like he's he struck a nerve. And the, the question for Christie is, did did his going after Rubio, uh, it, it clearly wounded Rubio, but did did it help Christie? A lot of times when you go negative uh, against someone, you hurt them, but you hurt yourself as well. Yeah, and, and, you know, on that point, I thought Kasich had a good night. I thought Jeb had a good night as well. Yes. And they, uh-huh. they really didn't have to attack anyone in order to have good nights. so uh, it'll, That's it'll right. Jeb, Jeb did have the, the, the really strong exchange on eminent domain with, with Trump. Yeah. Um, but, but you're right. I mean, Jeb was very sharp and confident um, and very strong on a number of different subjects um, at the debate. So he had a really good night at the best possible moment for himself because, look, New Hampshire is built very well for him as well, and he's put a lot of investment in up there. And I think there's a chance he could surprise some people in New Hampshire. I'm not predicting that he'll finish second, but I think he could finish perhaps a strong third and overperform and get some momentum. And he looks at Kasich and he says, you know, look, here's the, here's the thing, Chet. Kasich is not going to be the nominee. Yeah. I mean, if he somehow were to win New Hampshire or something like that, uh, perhaps there's going to be an effort to unite behind him. But at the end of the day, I just don't believe conservatives are going to accept Kasich. I really don't. And I don't think he's he has much of a chance – outside of the Northeast in his home state. And so in a way, Rubio's bat, you know, poor debate result helps Ted Cruz and it helps Trump because it, it prolonged the establishment unifying behind one candidate and it weakened Rubio, who's probably the strongest challenger to, to Trump and to Cruz. Right? So it was not a good night. If, you, if you're a moderate Republican and you want to sort of establish the candidate to be the nominee, it was not a good night in that sense. Visiting with Matt Makoviak, GOP political strategist. Uh, Let's take a look at the Democrats. Obviously, Bernie's going to win New Hampshire, but new national polls show that nationally, uh, Hillary and Bernie Sanders are getting closer and closer as far as the polls go. What's going on with the Democrats? Yeah, well, that race is tightening. There's no question. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Bernie, I think, got some momentum out of Iowa with that sort of, uh, you know, what, 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 what turned out to essentially be a tie. Um, but boy, if he had, if, first of all, there's a chance he probably won Iowa yeah. from a, uh, from a raw vote, uh, standpoint. Uh, but he, he didn't get the full bump out of it that you would have. It was kind of like Santorum, uh, four years ago, but yeah, look, I, the, the democratic race is going to go on for a while. Um, you know, I, I, I saw Jeff Zeleny of CNN said, said yesterday, uh, yesterday that, uh, you can't even clinch get the number of delegates you need to clinch on the Democratic side until May. So there's a chance that race goes on for a while. Now, the big question is going to be, if Bernie wins New Hampshire, can he win in the South? Can he, can he go down to you know, South Carolina and, and you know, improve his performance among minority groups, particularly African Americans? Because typically, or traditionally, Hillary's done well with, with, with Hispanics and African Americans. You have Nevada, where there's a huge Hispanic population, and South Carolina, where there's a huge African-American population. Look, the problem Hillary has is Bernie is raising enormous money through small-dollar donors online, and that is going to sustain him. And he's going to keep getting stronger. And I think, look, he is the perfect antidote to Hillary. He's, he's authentic. He has a real message. Um, there's not a lot of political calculation there. And if you're a Democrat or you're a liberal, you like his pure message. Um, and so I think he is a real problem for her. At the end of the day, I still think she's the nominee, but he, he's going to make this, this this Democratic primary longer and more expensive uh, than Hillary ever wanted it to be. Matt McCoviak, what can people find on mustreadtexas.com this morning? Yeah, there's a, an interesting story um, that CNN has on a, a new super PAC supporting Ted Cruz and sort of a few, the, 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 the donors that are funding it and the operators that are involved in it. Uh, put put that up there. Obviously, we're following the, the Cruz campaign very closely and some of the legislative races in Texas uh, that are unfolding as well. You can find all the news and all the opinion from around the state of Texas at mustreadtexas.com. All right. As always, Matt, appreciate your time. 
Have a great week. Take you care. You too. It's Matt Mikoviak. Follow him on Twitter at Matt Mikoviak.